I'm Peter Block here in Chicago at ACC 2016 for On the Scene. And with me is a friend and a really good colleague, Vino Tarani. He and I have worked together since the beginning of Taver. Sounds, yeah. it feels like two years ago, but it was much <laughs> longer than that. Anyway, uh, Vino has just finished reporting on S3, the newest uh, iteration of the Edwards valve and the outcomes of the S3 patients. So Vino, without further ado, tell me about the study, where you got the data, and then we'll talk about results. Sure, thanks Peter for having me uh, here. Uh, the data basically comes from the Partner Registry. It's the Partner 2 trial. We took the surgery patients from the Partner 2A randomized surgery patients, and we brought them over to compare them with the Sapien 3 intermediate risk patient population. So same SDS score, four to eight, and what we were able to do is uh, basically compare the two groups using a propensity score analysis, a very rigorous uh, math, uh, statistical analysis. And in that, we had the primary endpoint, which was slightly different than partner 2A, but our primary endpoint for the propensity analysis was all-cause mortality, all-cause stroke, or moderate, uh, or greater than moderate of aortic regurgitation. So that was a primary composite endpoint. What we, uh, what we showed is that it first met non-inferiority, TAVR, it favoring TAVR. So then we did a superiority test. And in the primary composite endpoint, we showed that Sapien 3 was superior to surgical valve therapy. We then broke down into separate components, all-cause mortality, favoring TAVR in a superiority analysis, all-cause stroke, favoring Sapien 3 compared to TAVR in, a, in that uh, analysis. We did see that surgical valve therapy was superior to TAVR, Sapien 3, when you looked at just greater than or equal to moderate aortic regurgitation. Yeah, and that's always the issue, isn't it? This paravalvular leak issue just continues to plague us. But the Sapien 3 valve is the latest iteration and a pretty good valve for yeah. AR. So having said that, <clears throat> we do have a moderate severe paravalvular leak rate at one year of 1.5%. And you and I have been doing this now since 2007. That's the lowest one year PV leak rate that we have seen period. So it's there and, and uh, it's very small though. Okay, so Sapien 3, S3, absolutely fantastic outcomes. Looks as though we're really heading in the right direction for these intermediate risk patients at least. Right. You know, What do you think about the lower risk patients? Does this mean we should go to SDS scores of two or what's your thoughts? Well, I, you know, I think that we're doing the right thing. We're going to look at this in a randomized trial. We're not going to use any propensity score analysis or registry data. We're going to look at this. We're going to follow the patients for you know 10 years. I mean, this is really important data. I don't think we should just start putting them into low-risk patients. We need to really rigorously study this. Remember, folks, this is a cardiac surgeon <laughs> and a very conservative one. Thank you, Vino. Thank you so much, Peter.